Welcome back everyone here to Full Circle Florida. Let's bring in Republican State Senator Blazing Gogli is here with us. Uh, Senator, I wanted to ask you about one of the bills that you filed, which would essentially end universal mail-in voting. And reaction from one of your former colleagues, Alan Hayes, was pretty blunt. Uh, he's now the supervisor of elections in Lake County. And he said, and I'm quoting here, uh, I'm sick and tired of this crap, his words. I'm embarrassed as a former state senator myself that a current senator would offer such a nonsensical idea. Your response to that? Well, um, with all due respect to uh, Alan Hayes, I just think, he, think he's wrong. And here's the reason why he's wrong is that Florida used to do it. We're just going back to the way we used to do things. And um, I think Alan Hayes is just sort of used to the way we have been doing it. Look, when it comes to elections, people basically want two things. They want to make sure that the person who is actually casting the ballot is indeed the person who is supposed to cast the ballot. And the other thing is they want to make sure that their votes are tallied correctly. So what my uh, bill proposes is that we go back to the old way of excuse only vote by mail, not non-excuse uh, only vote by mail. This idea that we can have um, 10 uh, hundreds of thousands, million ballots flying all over the state of Florida and there be no fraud and no error is just, it's quite frankly ridiculous. But the thing that matters here is that we've had two, not one, but two elections overturned last year alone and the judge cited that you had to redo the election because of fraud due to um, uh, vote by mail fraud. And the other thing is, is that um, something came out from the Heartland Institute, a report saying that about one in five, 20 percent of all voters who have filled out a vote by mail ballot did it fraudulently. And they they self-admitted committing fraud. Yeah. Look, I think that it's about time that we go back to everyone voting in person because it is clearly the most safest way to vote. All right, you're also behind a bill that would designate drug cartels as terrorist organizations. How would that work exactly? So it's a memorial. It's non-binding, but it's a way for the Florida legislature to tell the federal government that, hey, you need to get their, your act together. And now we're asking them to designate drug, cart drug cartels as foreign terrorist organizations, which allows the United States to freeze assets, um, to do things like um, put away the people in jail, the drug mules on the U.S. side. So we need more tools in the toolbox to combat illegal immigration. Just as just just another one. It's something the federal government should do because, quite frankly, the drug cartels are terrorizing our communities with uh, fentanyl, with with drugs. They're doing it with human trafficking and sex yeah. trafficking. It's a big problem, Senator Ngoglia. Thank you for your time, sir. Appreciate it. All right, let's take a break from politics, shall we, and talk about my other favorite subject and perhaps yours, football. The playoffs are here. The Bucks getting ready to take on the Eagles in the first round on Monday Night Football. And earlier this week, I dropped into the studios with two of the biggest names in Tampa Bay Sports Radio, Pat Donovan and Aaron Jacobson from the Pat and Aaron Show on 95.3 WDAE. I said I thought that all three coaches would end up safe, and I think that's going to be the case. And I did say I thought we'd be in a place where both Baker Mayfield and Todd Bowles would be back. And I don't know if we spend a lot of the season thinking one or the other or either would be true. But isn't it wild that out of the three, Todd Bowles would still be, as far as you're concerned, the most on the hot seat? By the way, out of those three teams, there's only one division champ. It was Todd Bowles and the Buccaneers. What do you think the Bucks' chances are? I think they're okay. Listen, I'd be lying to you if I said I was super confident in the Buccaneers the way they played the last two weeks of the season, but they have won five of six. Philadelphia has lost five of six. Both quarterbacks are banged up. It's not a great Buccaneers team heading into the playoffs, but they're just good enough where if they face the right matchup, like they're getting against the Philadelphia Eagles, a banged up Eagles team that hadn't been playing well anyway, it might be the perfect recipe for the Bucs to actually get a win here. What are people who are calling into the show saying about the state of this team right now they're all over the board half the people want todd bowles fired still half the people think he's coach of the year candidate one so, guy thought both yeah it's, it's all <laughs> over the board some people want baker mayfield to be back here as the quarterback but when you have a team like this where it's up and down and inconsistencies you're going to get a lot of different opinions and that's what we've gotten this season trying to figure out the personality of this team and i'm just wondering is this baker mayfield's team or is it antoine winfield jr's team is it tristan Wirf's team or does Tom Brady's shadow still loom 
over the Bucks. Yes, to, I think to all of those things. I think well, all those guys you mentioned are leaders right now. And I think also Tom Brady will always loom. His shadow will always loom over this football team until another quarterback takes them to and wins the Super Bowl. I think the team has taken on the personality of Baker Mayfield. I mean, you look at Baker Mayfield, a tough, a gritty guy, never gives up. That's what this team has really been doing. They bought into Baker Mayfield, and they've been playing with that type of grit. And I tell you what, Tampa Bay fans are Baker Mayfield, essentially. I mean, that's what the, the identity of this city is, I think. Just growing up here... People love to see a guy who, he's not giving himself up, he's not sliding, he goes head first, takes the hit. He's a gritty guy. He's a gritty guy, and like we've been saying all year long, and head coach Todd Bowles used the word moxie, and Baker Mayfield's got a lot of moxie. Does head coach Todd Bowles deserve a new contract? I don't know if he deserves a new contract, but one thing I believe he will get a new contract. When you come very close to if they lost that final regular season game against the Panthers, he most likely was going to lose his job. So it's a very slim margin of good and bad, retaining your job, losing your job. They're in the playoffs. They won the division. He'll most likely retain that job. Do you think Mike Evans will be back in a Bucks uniform next season? It's hard for me to imagine that Mike Evans doesn't finish his career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's actually easy for me to imagine Mike Evans in another uniform, and it makes me really uncomfortable. I hate it. Like, it, it's easy to imagine, but it's not fun to imagine. And I think Mike Evans really wants to be a Buccaneer. And I think the Buccaneers really want Mike Evans to be a Buccaneer. Jason Light said, I want to see him continue to catch a 1,000 yards here for years to come. I think the fans love him, too. They really want to see him uh, finish it out here in Tampa. That and some. What a season he's had. Thanks, guys, so much. This was fun. I hope we can do it again soon. Always fun. Appreciate it, Paul. Next on Full Circle Florida, do you believe in the Bucks, Tampa Bay? I went to get your voice.